Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing three really fun thrift flips with you guys. I had so much fun creating these little projects at home, so I thought I would take you along with me. You're gonna wanna stick around, it's gonna be a fun video. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best place to go to create websites, blogs, stores, and more so you can start pursuing your dreams. If you have not yet found me on Instagram, you can find me at Valerie Aguirre, where I share a lot of fun and behind the scenes there too. Okay, so starting with our first project, Project. I found this a really cute little pottery type piece at a thrift store. I think it was about like seven or eight bucks. So a few things that I did like about it, the inside was gorgeous. It has that really pretty kind of glazed look on the inside. It has that really pretty rim on the top of kind of that raw pottery um, color with that texture. I wasn't crazy about like the blue and the brown. It almost looked a little bit messy. I don't know if this was like a practice piece for somebody, but I liked the shape of it. I loved the little handles on the side and the little ridges. So I thought this would be a perfect project for a little bit of paint, but I wanted to save that top rim. So I'm going to take some frog tape and just kind of mask off the top part so that I can save that little cute rim. I'm gonna push this tape down really, really good and make sure that it has like a really good seal because I want a really good crisp line. I'm also going to take some newspaper and put this right in the middle so that I don't get any spray paint on the middle glazed part because I also want to save that too. So, so this newspaper was also bringing back so much nostalgia for me. The funnies, I don't know if it was just my family that called them the funnies or if everybody called them the funnies, leave me a comment down below. But yes, instant memories of fighting with my sisters over the funnies and the comics and enjoying those so much as a kid on like Sunday mornings. I remember some of my favorites being Dennis the Menace and Garfield. <laughs> So comment down below if you guys remember those two. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this outside and I actually am gonna try to give it a little bit of texture. I had this in my little paint cabinet. This is stone, it's called stone texture. It really doesn't do a ton, but it does add a very subtle little kind of texture to the side. So we'll see how that works. And this is the spray paint that I'm going to be using on the sides. It is Magnolia Home and it's in the color yarn. This is like a chalk spray paint. What I love about this is it's not a very super stark white. It's kind of like an antiqued ivory. I usually find the Magnolia Home spray paints at Ace, so they're pretty easy to find, but I really like this kind of antiqued white rather than a really kind of bright stark white. So I am only spray painting the outside. So if I did want to use this bowl as kind of like a decorative piece for like lemons or little fruits, something like that, I could easily um, use this for that. And I feel good about it that I didn't have to like re uh, glaze or put any type of sealant. But if you do want to put a lot of food in it and wash it in the dishwasher, those types of things, you may want to think about sealing something like this with a food safe type sealant. So I'm just going to pull off the remaining newspaper and tape. It is on there really good. That tape works amazing. And that brown crisp line is really, really perfect. I love the contrast with the brown and that ivory white. They complement each other. And it's exactly what I was looking for. A cute little neutral bowl with a little bit of texture and a little bit of personality and kind of a little bit of an aged look. I love that the inside is still that glazed kind of pottery type look and I can put lemons in there and kind of use it as a decorative type bowl. Not bad for an $8 find. And moving on to the next piece. So I found this little square type table with little rounded legs at the thrift store. They were asking $20 for it. 
If I had to put a timestamp, I would probably say early 90s, but I picked it up because it has a lot of personality. The curvature on the legs is really unique. You don't see things like this very often. And this type of curved furniture is really coming back into style. So I wanted to grab it and see if I could do something really cute. So I'm gonna share a little bit of inspiration here. This is from CB2. It has really rounded kind of chunky type legs, a very square top that is covered in a boucle upholstery. And so I really think that I can make this work. So I started out actually by sanding the legs down because I wanted to try to stain the legs. So, so I sanded the legs down. I'm not worried about the top since that will be covered anyway, but I picked up some black stain from the hardware store. And when I put this on, it just wasn't taking very well at all. I think it was a combination of the sanding and the curvature of the legs not taking the sanding very well. And also, also that it might be some type of veneer that I'm not sure of. So I was thinking I'm probably going to have to resand and paint over this in some different type of technique. I wanted to include that just because sometimes DIY projects don't always turn out how you think they will and you kind of have to re-strategize. So it's kind of the fun part of DIY, kind of just got to roll with it. So what I ended up doing was taking some black paint that I had. This is actually interior paint, but it is fine. Um, I'm gonna use some of this black paint and I mixed it with water because I want it a little bit of a thinner consistency. I want to try to get some of the wood grain in there. If I can get a little bit of that wood grain, I think it'll be a little bit more textured rather than just really like a thick paint. I want it to be kind of thinner so some of that wood grain shows through, if that makes sense. So I actually ended up doing, I think about three coats because it was a thinner consistency. I probably would have been fine with two, but I think I did three just to be on the safe side. So there's a few different ways you can paint furniture. You can use a spray gun, you can use a paintbrush, or you can use rollers. I, a lot of times, just grab a paintbrush because there's something a little bit more soothing about turning some music on in the quiet morning. It's so refreshing. First thing in the morning, it's one of my favorite things to do. So while that was drying, I headed over to Joann's to look at all of their project foam for the cushion type part. Joann's has a ton of different options. A lot of times they are on sale and you can also apply coupons so it really brings the price down. So I wanted something with a little bit of thickness, this three inch project foam is probably perfect and enough so that I can have a little bit of overhang on the sides and then I'll have a tiny bit left over for some extra pieces that I am thinking I might need. I also am gonna grab some batting. This is quilt batting. I'm just gonna grab a small little bag of it. I like to use this over the foam. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but I like to have it because I feel like it really helps. So I wanted to take a second and share a little bit about Squarespace. So if you've never heard of Squarespace, they're what I like to call the one-stop shop for things like creating websites, creating an online store, and even building your own personal brand through blogging and social media. If you've ever had the thought or the feeling to want to create a place online, Squarespace can help. Whether your passion is creating and selling, blogging, video making, Squarespace offers the most helpful features like beautiful customizable templates. Another feature I love is the SEO and email campaigns with features that will help grow your brand. There are even social media templates for stories and unfold an awesome video editing app to help with all your video making needs. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash Valerie Aguirre for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and start pursuing your passion today. So here is what I'll be using to attach the project foam. I'm going to be needing some scissors, my staple gun, and the project foam, the batting, and then whatever upholstery you'll be using. I had this a really cute boucle type fabric. I actually found it at Hobby Lobby a while back and I never ended up using it, but I hung on to it because it is a really cute brown color. 
So I'm just going to be kind of fitting the project foam to the top. So I'm just gonna mark a little line and it does not have to be perfect at all. I just kind of freehand it and then I drew a straight line, used a knife. I think the knife works the best and just cut out a straight line. And so I'm going to take the little table and the project foam and fit it again outside. And to attach it, I'm gonna use the Elmer's spray adhesive. You can find this at like any craft store. It works really well, but it is a little stinky. So I like to do this outside or in the garage. So carefully putting the project foam on top, making sure that it's kind of both even on both sides. Um, and then I'm gonna take some extra little pieces that I just cut out of the remaining, and I'm gonna kind of sandwich it in between the sides there. So I'm just gonna attach those four little rectangular pieces to each of the four sides and then give it a minute or two to dry before I take it back inside. So once it is back inside, I'm gonna take some scissors and just round out those corners so they're not so big and bulky. It's all preference, but I just want mine a little bit more rounded and a little bit smaller. So I am taking the quilt batting and I'm just going to put this over. It's just a really thin sheet of like cotton or polyester, depending on what you get, but it kind of just holds everything intact so that, um, it doesn't like shift a lot. It maybe adds a little bit of extra cushioning. I feel like the quilt batting just keeps everything a little bit more intact and from kind of separating. I'm just going to cut around and make sure that you allow for space because it's gonna be tucked underneath. So you definitely want it longer than uh, you think you would need it. This is the staple gun that I love. I use this for so many projects. It is the arrow and it also, uh, uses the JT21 staples. I will link it below, but it's such a good staple gun. I've had it for years. Perfect for projects, beginners. It's a really good one. So to attach that batting, I am just going to take it up to the very top of those legs. That part will be hidden by the upholstery. So once I have the batting in the place I want, then you just staple it down super easy. And for the excess, I am going to take a pair of scissors and just cut off all of that extra uh, material. You will not need that and it adds a little bit more bulkiness, which you don't want as well. So it's best to just cut it off. Now to add the upholstery or the fabric, I'm just going to drape it over the ottoman and make sure that there is enough of the material on each side as well as enough material so that it can go underneath and be stapled as well. Then I'm going to cut off the excess and save that little remnant piece for another future project. Also, my outfit that day <laughs> was matching exactly this table, which happened completely by accident, but yes, we do match. And once I get the fabric on, I'm actually just going to flip it over and get one side. And then I like to staple the very opposite side so that it pulls really tight. So kind of a visual would be stapling like north and south first and then east and west. <laughs> I am also very generous with my staples. I like to make sure that it is attached really well. So for the corners, there are a few different ways, lots of different ways that you can do this actually. So you can fold it under and uh, attach it that way for kind of a very clean look. For the boucle material, it is very forgiving. So your really fuzzy fabrics, shag, things with like longer fibers are going to hide a little bit more of the staples. And it's not as, uh, doesn't have to be as like precise, if, if that makes sense. It can be a little bit messy, which makes a project like this a lot easier, especially if you're a beginner, you don't have to be as exact with um, hiding your staples and those types of things. And then I'm just going to uh, cut the extra off and then anything that's kind of hanging down low, um, I'm just gonna give it some extra staples and it almost just looks like it's kind of a fuzzy little attachment there on the leg. Uh, it doesn't look bad at all. And this is the ottoman slash little table 
all done. I can also shorten the legs if I want to. I left them long just because I wasn't exactly sure about the height. So if I wanna cut them down, I can reduce the height a little bit, but I think those colors are so cute together. The brown boucle and the black, not bad for an all-in $40 flip. So I picked up this table from a thrift store. They were asking $20 for this as well. I loved the character, those cute little legs, all the detail, even the little pull on there was so cute. I love older pieces like this because the quality is just unmatched. The craftsmanship is always so unique and they just last, which is why I love furniture like this. So there was definitely a little bit of discoloration, some little nicks here and there that needed to probably be sanded down. So I actually just sanded this down really quick. It really didn't need a ton of sanding, but I wanted to fix some of the little nicks and dents that were in there. This pool is so cute. I'm pretty sure that this is the original pool. It is so adorable. It has almost like little roses on it. It's really cute. So after sanding, I'm gonna take a tack cloth and wipe it down really well so I can get ready for paint. That will get all of the dust and everything off. So this is the spray paint I'll be using. This is Rust-Oleum Chalked. It makes like a very matte kind of chalky type finish and they have a ton of different colors. I also love that you can spray it on. It makes it so fast. So I'm just gonna take this outside and spray this on. I believe I did about two coats and that was good. Um, I also like to use my little respirator uh, when I'm spraying just because it's a little bit safer. And for the tabletop, I like to turn it on its side. I feel like it's easier to spray um, going from the side rather than like over above it. So once it's all done drying, you can apply some of this decorative wax. I love this stuff. It works really well and it helps seal and protect the finish. This one's actually in the color white, but I will be using a clear for this little project. Once it's all dry, I can add that little pull back. It is so adorable. It's kind of like a little antiqued brass pull. And shut that little drawer. It still works so good. And here is that little table in all its glory. It is the most adorable little side table or nightstand, a little end table in a living room. There are so many things you could do with this. So much detail and character. Uh, who knew that some sanding and a little bit of spray paint could give this little beauty a whole new life. I love it. Not bad for about a $25 flip. And that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed these thrift flips that they gave you a little bit of inspiration to try and flip something on your own, or maybe you just enjoyed watching me. Either way, we are so thankful that you're here and that you watch our videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.